Isaiah 36, and I'll read the first uh, 10 verses. In the 14th year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. And the king of Assyria sent the Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem with a great army. And he stood by the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the washer's field. And there came out to him uh, Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, um, Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. And the Rabshakeh said to them, Say to Hezekiah, thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, On what do you rest this trust of yours? Do you think that mere words are strategy and power for war? In whom do you now trust that you have rebelled against me? Behold, you are trusting in Egypt, that broken reed of a staff, which will pierce the hand of any man who leans on it. Such is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places and altars Hezekiah has removed, saying to Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar? Come now, make a wager with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you 2,000 horses, if you are able on your part to set riders on them. How then can you repulse a single captain among the least of my master's servants, when you trust in Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Moreover, it is without the Lord that I have come up against uh, the, this land to destroy. Is it without the Lord that I have come up against this land to destroy it? The Lord said to me, "Go up against this land and destroy it." Well, with chapter thirty-six, we uh, enter a new section of Isaiah, chapters thirty-six to thirty-nine. Uh, you, you'll have noticed it's in narrative style rather than the uh, the kind of more poetic, prophetic style that we've seen uh, in the chapters up to this point. And thirty-six to thirty-nine. Uh, is a bridge between the two halves of Isaiah. And they uh, explore what happens against uh, uh, the, with, with the Assyrian uh, invasion that brought Judah to the uh, verge of extinction. And they also explore the, the diplomatic initiative from Babylon, which uh, again tempts uh, Judah with uh, a trust in, uh, in a foreign nation. And so these uh, chapters... Uh, which narrate historical events, uh, describe or, or relate to the key um, theme that we've seen in Isaiah so far, that is uh, trusting in the Lord. Um, that that uh, question is raised in verse 5 when the uh, commander says to Hezekiah, in whom do you now trust that you have rebelled against me? That's the issue that we've been thinking about. Who will Judah trust in? Will they trust in the nations around them? Isaiah has shown them again and again that that will not work. Or will they trust in uh, the Lord? Barry Webb in his commentary uh, also uh, notes how uh, entering into narrative uh, at this point and the kind of history of uh, Judah and Jerusalem sort of snaps us back from the, the end time visions that we've had in 35 and 36 visions of judgment for the whole world and salvation. And uh, uh, Barry Webb comments that, that true religion is always like that. It leads us not away from reality, but more deeply into it. And therefore, we can confront where we're, what we're facing with more courage and faith. And I think that's what Isaiah is showing us here, that, that the lessons of the first uh, 35 uh, chapters are, can now be brought to bear and we can understand what's going on in this, uh, in this chapter. It's a devastating situation for Judah. Uh, the whole land... Uh, is has been laid waste uh, by the Assyrian army, and only Jerusalem is holding out. And uh, verse 2, uh, the uh, Rabshakeh, the, the commander, uh, comes from Lachish, and Lachish was uh, also devastated. And uh, you can even see a, a, like a stone relief of um, the uh, siege and capture of Lachish by the Assyrians in the British uh, Museum. Uh, so he comes up, then the officials... Hezekiah sends his officials out in uh, verse 3. And uh, the commander of the Assyrian army, the Rabshakeh, points out the futility of uh, Jerusalem, Hezekiah, holding out against him. Um, and he raises that question that we've uh, uh, noticed already. Who do you trust? Verse 4, on what do you rest this trust of yours? Verse 5, and whom do you trust now that you have rebelled against me? Um, surely they can't trust in Egypt, verse 6. Uh, Egypt is a, is a broken staff. It's of no use. It will uh, actually uh, hinder and uh, hurt the person who relies on it. Verse 7, what about the Lord? Well, Hezekiah just cleansed the high places. And from Rabshakeh's point of view, this is like 
you know, Hezekiah, you're, you're kind of doing your own thing. The Lord is not uh, in control. Um, verses 8 and uh, 9, uh, the Rabshakeh taunts uh, uh, the people of Jerusalem by saying, okay, I'll give you, um, uh, I'll give you horses and chariots uh, if you can put men on them. In other words, you don't have an army. You have no, no way of defending yourselves. And then he comes back to the idea in verse 10 of the Lord, uh, uh, when after all, it's the Lord who is uh, commanding him to destroy um, uh, Jerusalem. Again, Barry uh, Webb in his commentary uh, said that this is this is the typical satanic art of um, twisting, uh, twisting the truth, and so sowing doubt and unbelief. Because there's enough uh, truth in here. Yes, it's true that Egypt they can't rely on Egypt. Uh, yes, in God's sovereignty, uh, the Lord has sent uh, Assyria, but no, uh, the Lord has not forsaken His people. And so um, Satan, in a sense, speaking through uh, this man is um, calling, calling on Jerusalem and, uh, and Hezekiah to not trust the Lord, but in a sense to trust Assyria, to, to, to surrender to Assyria, to, to give in. Um, the, uh, the commander then um, uh, takes another route in uh, verses 11 to 20 in addressing the people and calling on them to surrender. And uh, he does so in Hebrew uh, up to this point, uh, speaking in Aramaic. Aramaic would have been the language of the uh, diplomats. Now he addresses um, the whole city in uh, Hebrew uh, that they would have uh, understood. And uh, verse 15, uh, do not let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord. Again, you can see what uh, you can see what the uh, Syrians are doing. They're working um, against the Lord. They're saying, don't trust in the Lord. Uh, surrender to us. And if you surrender to us, uh, then this city will not be uh, delivered into the hands of the king uh, of Assyria. And uh, the promises that the Rabshakeh make in verse 6, each one of you will eat uh, uh, of his own vine, each one of you his own fig tree, and each of, of you will drink the water of his own sister. And these are sort of biblical promises. These are the promises that God would make. So again, you can see the rapture, it's, it's almost like Satan in the in the garden, you know, trust in me, do what I'm saying, and, and it will all be okay for you. Uh, so uh, Assyria is really standing in that place of Satan in, in leading people, uh, God's people away. And then 18 to 20, um, he underlines this idea to the people, don't trust in the Lord. Uh, verse 18, beware lest Hezekiah mislead you by saying the Lord will deliver us. Because look at all the other nations that we've conquered. Have any of their uh, gods uh, delivered you? Uh, no. Verse 20, whom among all who among all the gods of these lands has delivered their lands out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver uh, Jerusalem out of my hand. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Well, the uh, officials are silent uh, before um, uh, the 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 Rabshakeh, they don't say anything, and then they go back to Hezekiah, and the the chapter ends with a cliffhanger. What's going to happen? Uh, we'll have to wait um, uh, for the uh, for the next chapter to find out. But uh, I hope you could see that that the the theme that runs through this chapter is the theme that's been running through Isaiah's. Who will you trust in? It's even the question is articulated. Who will you trust in? Um, this uh, Assyrian official mocks the idea that God's people would trust in the Lord and he holds himself and his nation out as, uh, as a better object of trust and promises, makes all these promises of safety and prosperity. And uh, that is, uh, you know, ever the way in scripture, Satan uh, tempts us to look away from the Lord and to trust in other things. So this is a, a good reminder for us, uh, as we've been reminded all the way through Isaiah, to keep uh, trusting in the Lord uh, for us as Christians, the Lord Jesus and him alone. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we praise you that you are and you have shown yourself to be uh, the Lord of all the nations and uh, the, the uh, true object of uh, trust. And we thank you for the reminder in this chapter of how uh, devious uh, the evil one can be in trying to derail our trust in you. Please, would we remain steadfast uh, in our faith in you. In Jesus' name. Amen.